we're up against a SQL injection flaw that we need to exploit. How can we bypass such a filter that removes any single quote from our input? Let's get started. Welcome to the Hackerish channel. For those of you who don't know me, I just love hacking targets and learn along the way and share with you tips and techniques to help you in your ethical hacking journey. Welcome back to this new episode of this web hacking challenge. We've been able to map the application and the services hosted by the server. We're up against a SQL injection flaw that we need to exploit. Keep watching until the end of the video because I have a surprise for you. By the way, if you want to follow my footsteps and become also a penetration tester, I have a course that allow you to become just that. Just go to academy.thehackerish.com and there you will find from zero to securing your first penetration testing job. I invite you to get a glimpse of the first module. First of all, you need to acquire the technical skills. Uh, this is where intermediate and beginners will find themselves and from there, you will build your confidence and stand out from the crowd to increase your chances at getting the job interview and distinguish yourself from other candidates. And then you'll learn how to look for a job specifically for penetration testing offers and then succeed in your interviews and get hired finally. The goal of this course is to allow you to get signed and become a penetration tester. Instead of going blind and, uh, you know, trying using a black box approach, remember that we found a local file inclusion in the previous episode. So this is uh, mainly the request that we've been playing with. And as you can see, we get the content of etc passwd file. Now, if we change that to index.php, we will get the source code of index.php. Remember, this is the PHP hosted on the server, not the HTML code that we generally have on our web browser. So if you look closely, you can see that if post parameter login is sent, then the username variable is going to get the value of the UN parameter from the post data and the password will get password field. However, the developer has gone ahead and used the str replace php function to look for any occurrence of a single quote and then removing it. From there, there's this SQL query. Uh, do you spot anything vulnerable? It smells bad. And that's because we have concatenation here. So we're trying to look in the auth table for a password that's equal to our value and the username that's equal to the username. Because the single quote is getting removed from, from our input, there is basically no way we can inject something into uh, each parameter. However, let's copy this and paste it in a text editor and play with it. So this is our uh, request. And if we get out the garbage here, uh, we'll end up with this exact formatted command. So username equals the concatenation like this. So our input will go here and here. Now, what I want you to think about is how can we bypass such a filter that removes any single quote from our input? So pause the video, think about it and resume. So what we can do, because we control this part right here, is affect the second quote which is already hard coded in the query. So we can escape it with the same thing that the author has been using, basically escaping the escape. So if we do something like this in our input, let's just get rid of those. So this now will be part of the value affected to pass. And we'll go, go, go until the SQL query or the, the SQL engine finds the next single quote. So this essentially becomes the value for pass. And since we control this part right here, we can just say, hey, we will add or uh, two equals two and then comment out the rest of the query. So this is a perfectly valid SQL query that still will 
allow us to perform SQL injection. So let's try that out. Backslash for the password and for the username, we'll use this one. So let's use that for the username and for the password, I'm just going to use a backslash. I'm going to encode this part and send and we get a redirection to panel.php. So this means that we've essentially bypassed the authentication. So let's try that out on our username field and on the password, just type backslash and hit enter. And we are indeed redirected. Let's continue our enumeration of the new features. So we have here show users. If we click on the button continue, we get a list of users. Apparently the theme of the CTF is pirates, both in cartoons and in movies. So we have Jack Sparrow and Captain Barbosa. Yeah, I just forgot to say Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> so let's uh, rerun this request. I just wanted to capture the request on my burp instance. And I'm also going to choose add user. Remember, I'm just trying to map the application features once more. With new access comes new features and uh, come new enumeration. So I, uh, recognize here the same input fields that I had when we performed brute forcing in the first episode. So I hope that this time something, the feature works. I'm going to upload a dummy picture and just let these contain the uh, defaults and upload. Oh, it worked now. Upload successfully. Okay, let's uh, show the list of users. And indeed, we have our image and we have our inputs right here. And where are these hosted? If we open this in a new tab, they are un under the folder uploaded images. Okay, so we have a directory listing here, but uh, there are no uh, sensitive files. So we're not going to call this a vulnerability for now. So we have a uh, pretty interesting features right away. We have the post data to slash panel.php, which adds in our image or adds our user. So let's send this to the repeater. Before actually doing this, I'm just going to look for successful. Yep, just to make sure that we indeed choose the right request here. So let's send it to the repeater. We also had the listing of users that would be in po another post uh, request, this time with two parameters load and continue. Okay, send this to re the repeater and just start playing with those. This is the typical process that any hacker would follow. I get a lot of com comments saying, hey, um, can you do uh, tests on a real website? I mean, like in a bug bounty uh, scope, but it's unethical. However, the same approach applies. I mean, application mapping, port scanning, um, directory enumeration, et cetera, et cetera, until you find the crack from the attack surface and then you exploit it. There's no magic here. So uh, this is our uh, request that posts a new user. So let's, instead of sending an image, send a dummy text, send it. And what do we get here in the response? It's a lot smaller, which means that we have a problem here. Oh, I told you, dear, only PNG, JPEG, and GIF files are allowed. That's curious because I haven't changed the content type. It still says image slash JPEG. I haven't changed the file name extension. However, for some reason, the developer still detected that our file is not an image. And that's because it's testing the magic number. So let's go back to our previous file. If you look closely, you can see that there is a string right at the top, at the beginning of the file, which contains jfif. So this is the magic number of a JPEG file. Now you can look that up on the internet, JPEG magic number. And this is the magic number for um, JPEG. So instead of, you know, taking that magic number, um, converting it and pasting it here. 
So I'm going to take that part and paste in my dummy payload. And it says here, uploaded successfully. Okay, so if we try to fetch that file now, what are we going to get? Well, let's find out. If I just uh, show the list of users, I get a broken image, which means that we've managed to upload our malicious content. Um, I'm just going to copy the image address and in order to fetch it, I can use curl, for example. It's saying you need to output it. Let's say EMG. And if we cat EMG, we indeed get our payload back. Notice the magic number here, which is still preserved. So with that said, let's try something different. Instead of sending this benign string, I'm going to send a PHP code and I'm going to echo a string like this and send it. Let's verify if we indeed get our upload successfully. Now, if we re-download the image once more, we indeed get our PHP back. But notice that we only got a text. Our PHP code wasn't evaluated. We need to find a way to run this code. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. Now, if you have been watching until this time, I have a surprise for you. Throughout this video, I have put a hidden flag that if you are able to recover, you will be entitled to 100% discount coupon, which means that you will get access to my course for free. The first three will benefit from that offer. I can't wait to see you in the course.